Hi, Tom Klaus here with Tenacious Change and another conversation with the changemaker. My friend and colleague Stan Martin is masterful in community engagement. I met Stan several years ago through a federal project we were working on together. Stan has been facilitating and co-leading with the community CAI Global's Hope Buffalo work for the past several years. It has been my privilege to be a consultant in Buffalo, New York for Stan on that initiative. However, you need to know it was an experience of mutual learning. I've seen Stan in action and nobody does relationship building and community engagement better. Since cloning isn't really a doable thing yet, the next best thing I could do was interview Stan. In fact, since starting this conversation series, I have always known I wanted to include an interview with him. Actually, you need to get to know Stan and learn about his work with Hope Buffalo. In the description below this video, you'll find links to Hope Buffalo, CAI Global, and a couple of ways to contact Stan. In this conversation, Stan Martin and I talk about what it takes to build relationships, engage the whole community, and create meaningful participation and change toward the goal of creating optimal health and wellness in communities with the greatest needs. Before we get started, don't forget to hit the red subscribe button to receive notices of when I've posted new videos and conversations. Now, settle in and hang out with me and Stan Martin for the next few minutes. Stan Martin, it is so good to see you again, and thank you so much for joining me today. How's it going? It's going well, my friend. How are you? You know, I'm okay. I'm I'm doing pretty okay. So now, Stan, I've known you for several years, and uh, we met through uh, a federal teen pregnancy prevention project uh, a few years ago, and I got to know you even better when I was working as a consultant on the Hope Buffalo um, project in Buffalo, New York. And of course, you've directed that project now for several years. Um, I'd like to really begin our Changemaker conversation today, actually, with Hope Buffalo. And ask, ask you if you wouldn't mind, please, telling us about that initiative and what's being accomplished by Hope Buffalo today. Thank you, Tom. It's a pleasure to be here uh, with you. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to have this conversation with you. Hope Buffalo stands for Health, Opportunity, Prevention, and Education. And it was actually created, you know, by the community. It's a youth and community-led initiatives that really look or seeks to uh, uh, change the narrative in terms of how we are addressing teen pregnancy here in Buffalo. Traditionally or historically, oftentimes, and when we look at this particular work, uh, some of the um, narrative surrounds teen pregnancy as the root causes of poverty. But one of the things that we looked at in the community after having several conversations and meetings and dialogues, et cetera, you know, the community said, we wanna look at poverty as the root causes of teen pregnancy. So it was very important uh, from the community perspectives, from their lens, that we not only look at implementing evidence-based you know, uh, interventions surrounding the subject matter, but also that we address some of the other pillars surrounding uh, livable wage employment, housing, and addressing the uh, community built environment, you know, as well. So uh, having said that, you know, we focus on uh, making sure that youth have access to uh, community clinical linkages or our uh, comprehensive referral linkage strategy, which was very important because um, the youth participated in a, uh, in a assessment of healthcare providers in the community. And what came out of that assessment was that we found that several uh, providers that you, quite frankly, didn't like or didn't care for, you know, and they, they didn't find them as youth affirming or youth friendly. So those who, after further conversations and, you know, vetting, you know, the youth came up with this wonderful referral linkage guide for teens to utilize in case they needed access to services. 
in addition to that, one of our other pillars uh, within Hope Buffalo is to really look at creating a branded movement, creating a movement that the youth and the community owns. And we were very successful in doing that uh, with the community. When you look at Hope Buffalo and our logo, all of that is community led and community driven. You know, sometimes we didn't get it right, but uh, the community and they were very open and honest to let us know uh, that. So we're very proud that we, after several tries, we finally got it right. And this was something that they could own. And, and last but not least, I would say that very, um, very, um, uh, that we're very proud of is that, you no, know, we've been able to reach through Hope Buffalo over 7,000 youth, you know, across, you know, nine zip codes. And uh, one of the things that we've been able to do um, is to drive teen pregnancy rates down. And when you look at some of the national and local data, uh, it's, it's at some of the lowest rates that it has been in the last 30 years. So uh, we count that, you know, amongst our successes, which we'll probably talk about later on. And, and, and also uh, just really uh, building a groundswell of community uh, engagement and uh, community support so that they're leading the charge. Well, thanks, Dan. That's a really nice overview on Hope Buffalo. And I think it's important for, for people that may be watching this to have some sense of what Hope Buffalo is all about, because certainly you're doing some really uh, incredible work there. And uh, and a lot of that is uh, is really around relationship building and uh, and community engagement. And so for as long as I have known you, uh, I have really been impressed by by the things that you bring to the table for Hope Buffalo. You bring a knowledge of your community. Uh, you, you bring an ability to really establish uh, meaningful relationships with people. And, and there is an ease that you have in, in building relationships and, in, and engaging the whole of the community. So I also know, though, you might have something that is kind of an interesting challenge on it, and maybe maybe not, and that is that you're a native son of Buffalo. So you've been away for a number of years, and then you come back to help establish Hope Buffalo. And so I'm, I'm wondering, what's it like to come back to your hometown, to lead a project that depends so much on community engagement? How, how did being a native son uh, make that uh, easier or maybe make it more difficult? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, first and foremost, I would like to say it's actually it's the community that's leading this work. You know, I'm just along for the ride. You know, they're they're driving the ship. They're they're driving the car. And you know, as a native son, you know, of Buffalo, um, it's very rewarding and gratifying. You know, when I tour, you know, the different neighborhoods or communities that I grew up in, and that at the end of the day, you know, I can see you know the fruits of my labor. You know, the the fruits of you know, the, the dreams and aspirations of community residents and, and of children and of adults and, and seniors for that matter. And uh, that right there itself is, is priceless. You know, at, at the same time, you know, uh, it's very challenging because of the fact that, you know, um, times have changed. You know, you know, people have changed, you know, uh, uh, new offices have opened up, you know, we have gentrification. You know that you know that that has taken place or is taking place here in the city of Buffalo. Uh, we're, we're going through a what some would call or consider you know a renaissance period. So you know with that you know there's there's new players. You know there's you know there's new players, but also there's new opportunities. So um, you know I I found though you know overall the experience that I've had. You know I've been back you know in my hometown. I'm going to say you know three years now. You know uh, and and well, within that time span. You know that you know we've made a lot of success, a lot of inroads. Well, now you've been back in Buffalo for three years, living in Buffalo, but you were actually working with Hope Buffalo prior to that when you were still living in New York City, right? Right, exactly. Right. So, uh, so here comes the hometown boy <laughs> coming in from from New York City, the big city. Right, right. <laughs> and and so did did that raise any eyebrows for folks that? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, when we first received the grant, you know, uh, uh, for Hope Buffalo, <clears throat> I was uh, traveling back and forth from New York City, you know, uh, quite a reg you know, quite regularly. You know, uh, we had a staff person at that point in time, one staff person here who was great, Maisha Drayton. She was doing a great job uh, and was a phenomenal trainer and person just overall. And one of the things that, you know, I went back 
you know, to Barbara Chicatelli, Chicatelli, our uh, CEO and president and founder, and said, hmm, there's a lot of great things that's happening in the city of Buffalo. I think we might want to consider opening up an office. So she said, really, Stan? <laughs> you know, we chuckled, got a big laugh out of it. And, you know, said, you know, I, I said to her that there was this community meeting, this forum that was taking place where a lot of healthcare providers, you know, were on stakeholders were going to be meeting, you know, to talk about, you know, applying for this grant, for this funding, you know, to benefit, you know, to serve um, those uh, communities with the greatest need. And she gave me her blessings. I went to the meeting and it was, uh, everything was going great, Tom. Everything, I mean, it couldn't have went any better. I couldn't have planned this because at the end of the meeting, they wanted to select a chairperson, you know, to help lead the initiative and, you know, get things going and building the infrastructure, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, I still had some relationships there that people knew me, knew my work and, you know, knew that I was a person of integrity and they, some voted me to be the chair and help lead the charge. Uh, so I was all happy and excited about it. And I was ready to go back and report to Barbara Chicatelli, you know, that, you know, uh, we're off to a great start and Lord and behold, Someone says, wait a moment, time out. Who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you know, I, I, I haven't seen him. I don't know him. I'm not familiar with him. What is his body of work? You know, uh, who is he? And, you know, that, for, you know that, that said to me that, you know, we as an organization, you know, we had a lot of work to do in terms of relationship building, as well as me myself, you know, um, in terms of coming back home. Um, as well. So I, I saw it as an opportunity to do some some great work and, you know, eventually, you know, uh, things worked out. So uh, that's well, my That's story. really a great story, Stan. It, it really is. And and actually, I, I, I knew about that story. So I wanted to make sure you got that in because <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a really good one. It's a really good one. Uh, well, you know, you know what it said, Tom, if I could speak to just real briefly, sure. you know, what, what, it, what it really said was that you know, oftentimes the um, you know organizations, you know, they come into a community or they are part of a community already, and yet and still they haven't or we haven't done the important groundwork. You know, we haven't built that trust. We haven't built that rapport. You know, with those who are mostly affected by the work that we're trying to do, and that's a huge mistake. You know, and that's a huge assumption. You know, um, that we oftentimes make. So, and I was very glad that that happened because I was able to share with, um, you know, our CEO, um, Barbara Ticatelli, and I was very even more excited to hear that her concern was that we weren't going to be seen as another outside organization or community-based organization, not-for-profit, that was going to come in and take resources, you know, from other community-based organizations or not have established a uh, relationship, you know, a bi-directional uh, with those mostly affected by the work in a real meaningful manner. So that really was a light bulb moment and eye opening. And, you know, uh, I was glad that Barbara, uh, you know, uh, that was on her, you know, like her vision, one of her concerns and we were able to address that and then move forward to create a sustainable movement. Right. Well, we probably should give a shout out to Barbara here because people maybe know that you work for CAI Global which used to uh, go by the full name of Chickatelli and Associates. Associates. And so the, the Chickatelli there is actually Barbara Chickatelli, uh, who is the founder of CAI Global, correct? Absolutely, correct. Right, so, and we, we uh, I, it's my pleasure to also know Barbara, as you know, and, uh, and you know, I can just see her uh, in that conversation with you and, and, uh, and, and not, not only, Imagine how her mind works about how how does this how is this going to work in Buffalo, but also in terms of of then that then when it's a go, you know her support for you in in that in that effort. So, absolutely. Well, hey, uh, one of the things you taught me about the uh, the community of Buffalo when I was working with you up there is how just how segmented and divided the community is by race and ethnicity. And if I remember right, um, you even. Said, said to me that you could you could pull out a map and show me some very distinct geographical boundaries uh, separating the three sub communities of Black uh, African American community, the Latino Hispanic community, and the White Caucasian community. Um, however, you also knew that each of these communities 
uh, needed to be engaged and have meaningful roles in the work of Hope Buffalo. And so I'm wondering, can you speak a little bit into the question of what have you been doing over the past few years to build relationships and engage people in all three of these sub-communities? Yeah, thank, thank you for bringing that up, Tom. You, you know, when you look at some of the data from, you know, uh, from the census tracts, you know, um, Buffalo's in the top five in terms of uh, one of the most segregated cities, you know, by population, you know, here in the country. And, and also, um, unfortunately, one of, one of the poorest as well. You know, so we have high child poverty rates, you know, here in the city of Buffalo. And yet and still we have tremendous assets, you know, as well. And and one of those assets is we call ourselves the city of good neighbors. So um, that's what other than chicken wings <laughs> we also, <laughs> and the Buffalo Bills, we know for, you know, the, the city known as being the city of good neighbors. So it was very important when we we're, uh, were creating this movement that it was very important to, that it was diverse, you know, that we've already, I mean, well, that we um, also address equity, you know, not, not in terms of equality, uh, but, you know, addressing equity in terms of access to services and also being inclusive, you know, not, not just inclusive in terms of race and ethnicity, but also sexual preference, orientation, et cetera. So those, those, those key elements, you know, were essential in creating a, a safe environment where People, you know, could come and, you know, uh, uh, and, and share their thoughts, their experiences in a very transparent, uh, open way without feeling threatened, you know, um, but also being, being um, you know, respected, you know, as, as well. It doesn't mean that we always agree, you know, but yet and still we had to have those open and honest conversations in order to move forward. So without, without that uh, some people might call it, you know, confrontation or uncomfortable moments. We had we had to really be uncomfortable for a little while in order to get comfortable doing this work, you know, in these spaces and with alongside, you know, um, um, those with the lived experience, you know, who really, really uh, voices that we needed to amplify and to listen to and to, you know, uh, work in concert with. You know, Stan, as, as you were talking about that, uh, something uh, actually it goes way back to your comment about chicken wings, the Buffalo Bills and the city uh, of good neighbors. Right. Uh, it occurred to me that, you know, we 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 cannot really emphasize enough the importance of of engaging, um, knowing the community that you are attempting to engage. And so one of the great advantages that you bring is that as a native son, you come in and you're, you're aware of some of these nuances, even though you'd been away for a while, you know, you could pick up on those and, 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 uh, and, and really understand those things a lot quicker than somebody like myself could coming completely from the outside. And, and so I guess what it just says to me is, is the value in when, when we're doing relationship building and community engagement. There is certainly this this sense of 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 knowing one another and getting to know one another, but there is also that sense of how important it is to really understand the culture of the community in which you are working. Absolutely. You, you want to say anything about that? Yeah, well, I, I'll give you an example. You know, uh, just building on you know, see how we're having this open conversation. Just building on the chicken wings, <laughs> you know, <laughs> hot, medium, or mild, <laughs> you know. Uh, though nonetheless, though, all right, some might prefer blue cheese, some might prefer ranch. All right, Buffalonians, <laughs> you know, typically prefer the blue cheese. However, we can all agree, though. What can we all agree on? All right, it, that they're good. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, you know, finding finding that sweet spot, you know, finding finding what it is that we have in common, you know, and then working from that perspective, you know, as a common denominator, you know, to, uh, you know, to achieve what it is that we're trying to, you know, uh, accomplish. That's that's our goal. You know. Stan, what is it about upstate New York that I, I make so many associations with the food? I mean, I mean, there's Binghamton, New York and the Speedies. Right. And and then uh, I, I think of uh, Albany and pizza and I don't know why exactly. But then but then I think now Buffalo, you know, chicken wings. But there but there's also a hot dog up there. 
there, there's a hot dog place. Is it? Well, well we have Ted's. We have, we have Ted's. 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 Yes. <laughs> See, you know, the, you know, the community already. Yes. Oh no. I know the, I know food. I mean, yeah. the, the problem is I've known food all my life, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is, that is, that is really good. Um, so you, you, you're this native son that has come home. Uh, you know, the community, you've been really working to build relationships and engage various, uh, sub communities within the larger community and bring them together on, on, uh, um, the work of Hope Buffalo. And of course, then we hit a pandemic, right? And now all of those tools that a community organizer and engager has at their disposal, you know, you know, the face-to-face -face meetings, the coffee chats, the walking across the street and just, you know, talking with somebody, those things kind of go away. And so what I'm wondering is what were you um, able to continue to do um, during, uh, through, through the pandemic, even right up until now, because we're still dealing with pandemic issues? Uh, in November of 2021. Uh, but, but what were the workarounds that you had to have? So if you couldn't engage people personally, what what did you do differently? Yeah, yeah. You know, um, certainly, you know, the pandemic presented some, you know, challenges, you know, for, for all of us. And, you know, I want to, you know, send a, you know, offer my deepest, you know, uh, um, you know, sentiments to those who, you know, have, you know, been affected by, you know, COVID or, you know, uh, sick or severely ill, and unfortunately, who may have lost someone, you know, uh, as a result of COVID, because um, it's real. And uh, one of the things that we did, you know, to try and address some of those challenges, as many organizations, I'm sure, or, or movements, you know, we quickly pivoted to a um, virtual world, whereas uh, many people were sheltering in place, schools were closed, Parents weren't, weren't uh, you know, like uh, going to work anymore or very few, many of them was working from home. So we were able, you know, to pivot and implement our programs, our evidence-based interventions, you know, uh, on a virtual platform. As I mentioned earlier that, you know, um, Buffalo is dealing with, you know, high, you know, a, a high poverty, you know, um, issue, you know, here in our community, um, even though there's a renaissance that's occurring, and that created, believe it or not, that's still, you know, we're dealing with a digital divide, you know, here, you know, where some people don't have access to the internet or their internet broadband or what have you, um, isn't um, as strong as, you know, as others. Let me just put it that way, another equity issue. So one of the things that we've done, Tom, and not just with Hope Buffalo, um, but with some of our other uh, initiatives uh, that are happening here in, um, here in the area, we went door to door, you know, with, with, with door hangers, you know, with information surrounding, you know, whether it's COVID or, or, uh, or tobacco use and other, you know, other um, health initiatives that we're working on. We left information really at the door, you know, on people, uh, 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 homes and apartment buildings, you know, about, you know, about COVID-19, what they can do to keep themselves safe, and also about many of our health initiatives as well. And, uh, one one of the one of the, I think the one of the things that we tried to do was not just look at you know what was most popular but also what's most uh, uh, convenient and accessible to our you know to our community and believe it or not <laughs> penny savers you know newspapers print magazines flyers you know so to speak you know in addition to the door hangers so we tried to get you know creative and innovative. You know, in our work, in our in our efforts to increase awareness and education, and you know, reach our you know priority populations as well. That's quite brilliant, actually. I mean, it, what it says to us is that um, uh, we we've certainly done a lot of different and new things with digital technology, especially since you know the advent of the internet and and um, with some of the the big players in this since about two thousand five, two thousand six, but. The, the reality is, is that sometimes we have to go back to the old ways mm -hmm. to even make the new ways work. Yeah, and yeah, absolutely. I know, you know, that's one of the things that, you know, um, I think that we oftentimes we might rely too much on best practices, quote unquote, you know, and, and, and look at, you know, what, what's what's innovative, what's what's promising, 
and and also you know what has worked you know and uh one of the things i i like to say and you know remind folks you know um about that is not looking at necessarily what's wrong but, but what's strong you know about our community and and identifying those tools and resources you know that can help you know not only you know uh get message to people but also amplify you know uh you know our priority population voices as well you know, meeting that's you know meeting them where they're at you know so what's strong excellent really like that thank you stan um so hope buffalo uh was birthed in about 2015 if i remember correctly and uh you're hoping that hope buffalo just keeps right on going for quite a while yet and certainly it seems like it's it's uh, it's making some great efforts uh movement in that direction so can you talk with me a little bit about how has relationship building and engagement contributed to ensuring the continuation or the sustain what we might think of as the sustainability of hope buffalo right uh excellent question i think uh you know you know when we when we're talking about sustainability you know oftentimes you know we don't think about it until the last year you know of the grant <laughs> you know but it's kind of like evaluation it should be thought of at the first in the beginning you know um address in the middle as well as at the end and one of the things when you look at you know um our role CAI Chicatel Associates as a you know backbone organization uh, it's very important to work with those partners so that you know you're building their self-efficacy. You know you're building or creating uh, pathways and, and systems. Uh, it doesn't always have to necessarily be resources. That's that's nice, but you're creating systems and and resources that will last beyond the lifespan of a, of a funding period or, or of a grant. So what we've been doing is really building uh, relationships with. Uh, many of our community-based organizations um, to identify, you know, their their sustainability plan, you know, across uh, across within their organization to create, you know, policies and systemic change, and also to position themselves, you know, to go after, you know, funding as well. You know, they have access to the science, they have access to the data, you know, they have access to the information, where so they can collaboratively. You know, um, as a 501c3 or you know, as an organization, they can you know work together, you know, to apply for funding, you know, um, you know that will continue the um, that will continue to work or strengthen the work, you know, moving forward. So I'm very very excited that you know we we've started you know that process with several organizations um, that you know we ourselves have been very fortunate to be or to receive continued funding. You know, from the Office of Population Affairs for Hope Buffalo uh, to continue to work towards optimizing teen health. And well, just, just once again, I think it's very important uh, that we not necessarily empower, but we build the self-efficacy of the community, you know, uh, in a way that, you know, they're able to sustain it and own the movement, you know, themselves, you know, and, and to define it, you know, as the community continues to change and move forward also. You know, Stan, um, I am um, aware of the fact that uh, I am not the only person in the world that is, knows how effective you've been in building relationships and engaging in your community. Um, you recently, and in fact, I got to see this. It was pretty cool. Uh, you recently were recognized as one of four people uh, to receive the Pay It Forward Award from the Community Foundation of Greater Buffalo. But, but Stan, I'm wondering if you can uh, um, tell us more about what the Pay It, Pay it Forward um, uh, Award is about and, and uh, what does it feel like to have so many eyes on you that are appreciating your work? Yeah, yeah. yeah th th thank you, Tom. I'm, I'm um, very humble, you know, by the award, you know, and, you know, thank you and your family, you know, for attending. You know as well and you know the award itself is really um is, in my opinion it's to, in recognition of the community you know uh it's, it's 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 it represents you know those who have come before me you know who have worked in this space you know in this community and also those who i have the pleasure of, of standing beside and working shoulder to shoulder with you know to really you know uh, address health equity 
you know, to increase the quality of life, you know, of, you know, of folks and residents, especially youth in particular, for generations to come. The award uh, symbolizes or recognizes um, individuals, organizations who have worked with youth, primarily uh, youth of color, you know, and, and exemplify uh, leadership qualities that, you know, they consider to be, you know, outstanding and also, um, um, uh, what was the word they used? But I'm going to, I'm going to say just, um, you know, for, further, you know, the advancement of others and, you know, you know, uh, so I'm, I'm very, you know, appreciative of that honor and, and yet and still I'm very humble because it's really a, is a reflection of the hard work of other individuals, CAI and the community, you know, who really is deserving of it. Um, what it feels like to have, um, eyes or to be recognized, it, it feels great. It feels wonderful because of it, it, it really provides an opportunity um, to transport what what is happening here in Buffalo in other places, to replicate it, you know, um, in other areas that have, you know, similar needs, that have, you know, um, uh, uh, similar, similar, you know, challenges. And I think that is a, I think that is a great, you know, opportunity. Um, very, I'm very proud to, you know, help carry that torch because it can't just stay in one place, you know, if we are to truly be successful, you know, um, it has to happen, you know, on a much larger scale. So I, I think that, you know, this, that is a tremendous honor and uh, I'm very proud, you know, for the community, um, for, for that hard work and, you know, um, you know, to be recognized in that light. So thank you. Well, I, you know, Stan, I, we were really honored uh, to be invited to uh, sit in on that, uh, that award ceremony. And we were, we felt so proud of you and, uh, and pr so proud for you. Uh, as well, because uh, we know how hard you work. Uh, we know who you are as a person. And uh, it's, it is just always so, so exciting to see people that we, uh, we appreciate and care about so much being honored in that way. So uh, it was great. Thank you. Thank you for that invite. And, uh, right. and, 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 and if I might add, Tom, is that, you know, the reason that uh, I'm glad you were able to attend in terms of, you know, um, not just attend, but also to see, you know, uh, the fruits of your labor. You know, certainly you and I have worked together for, you know, a number of years and got to, you know, know one another. And, you know, the the work what you see or what's what's happening here in Buffalo, you know, we we count you <laughs> and hope you count, hopefully that you count us, you know, amongst your successes because, you know, you put a lot of time and effort into Hope Buffalo into this community. And to be recognized as such, you know, we want to honor you and what you're doing with Tenacious Change, you know, as well, you know, as an example of uh, what could be, you know, to imagine, you know, the, the, um, the way and the path forward. So uh, thank you. Well, thank you, Stan. I'm, I'm very honored by that and, and very appreciative of it as well. Um, and, and, I, and, and actually, you've shared that with me many times over the years. And, uh, and it's, it's always... Uh, a little embarrassing for me to hear because because I know y'all are doing the work <laughs> and you're doing it so very very well. But but thank you so much and and I I I, I not only uh, you know beyond counting you as as uh, as a group that I feel like I've had some success with, I, I really count you all as as friends and colleagues and. Uh, and uh, really appreciate everything you're doing for the young people of Buffalo. It's it's really great. I I follow you, and I uh -huh. and I try to keep tabs on you. You know, <laughs> but you <laughs> y'all are doing y'all are doing really good work up there. So, but thank, thank you very you. much. Um, I still reflecting a little bit on Hope Buffalo, um, and and looking ahead. What what more would you like to do in terms of relationship building and engagements to deepen the sense of ownership the community has in Hope Buffalo, Stan? Um, one of the things, you, you know, um, I would like to do is to continue to ask the community, you know, how can we, con how can we go deeper and even further upstream, you know, uh, to, to really, um, engage them even more so, you know, um, in, in a meaningful and in a authentic and transparent way so that we can, you know, make sure that we're 
doing the work of the people. Uh, and, and then to be able to, once again, as I said earlier, to have um, this work serve as a model, you know, for other communities, you know, um, to, to uh, adapt and to implement, you know, in, 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 in their area. You, you, you know, I, and I, I think I would like to, you know, see it, you know, globally, you know, you know, as well, you know, because when I say see it, I mean, authentic community engagement. You know, we oftentimes, you know, talk about what does that mean? What does that look like? And that is really creating a movement or movements that, you know, the people own, that the people, you know, can really roll up their sleeves you know, sink their teeth in, you know, get their hands, you know, in the dirt, so to speak, <laughs> and, and say and see, you know, um, I, I'm, I'm a part of this, you know, I know I, this is my legacy, yeah. you know, so I think that's something that, you know, I, I would love to see. I think it's, it's starting to happen and you know, it's starting to happen. I think COVID um, has shined a light on this as well as unfortunately in terms of health disparities and, um, and unfortunately, you know, the death of George Floyd, you know, as well, in terms of the inequities that exist in our society. So um, um, we can no longer continue to put our heads in the hand, uh, in, the, in the sand and, you know, think that, you know, they don't exist. Uh, the curtain has pulled back. Now, what are we going to do about it? You know, now, how are we going to really engage, you know, those who are mostly affected by it in it as a part of the solution and not seen as a part of the problem? Thank you. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, change the frame of reference for you just a little bit here. Uh, I, I want you to imagine that uh, uh, I, I called you up someday, or, or I should say Zoomed you up someday. <laughs> and, I, and I said, hey, Stan, uh, I, I'm just really starting out here in, uh, in building a community-wide change effort. And uh, I need some advice from you. Uh, what three things could you tell me are the most important things for me to do to build relationships and engage the whole community? Uh, uh, one of the things I would say, the three things I would say, one first um, is to avoid tokenism. You know, when, when you look at, you know, participation and engagement, you know, for example, you know, when uh, elected officials, you know, uh, want to get their point across or show that, you know, that they're, you know, they have the best interests of our children. They oftentimes might invite children or youth to appear with them in a photo op, but they don't even know their names. Mm. You know, they don't even know their story. You know, they don't even know where they may not or may know where they live. You know, so we, in terms of engaging partners, you know, in terms of engaging those with lived experience, you know, we want to avoid <laughs> you know, tokenism. We want to get to know them. We want to build that rapport, you know, with them. Um, we want to build trust. Uh, the second thing uh, I would say is respect, you know. Um, and, you know, as Aretha Franklin would say, R-E-S-P-E-C-T, you mm -hmm. know, tell me what that means. You know, you all know the song, but what does that mean? What does that look like? You know, treating people with dignity and respect, you know, regardless of what type of car they drive, we regardless of what type of home they might have or what's in their wallet or the shoes or the clothes on their back, everyone deserves to be treated with dignity, you know, and respect. You, you know, that's, that, that is, in my opinion, uh, for, well, you know, very important. And, and, and last but not least, I would say that, you know, really, if you're going to do this work, provide not just a space at the table, you know, um, for, for the conversation, um, really listen and engage, you know, um, um, everyone at the table in the conversation in a real uh, authentic way. Make sure that people, oftentimes, when you, I like to give examples sometimes, when they're invited to the table, invited to the meeting, all right, they're just invited, you know, or they're um, uh, maybe provided opportunities to ask questions or give input. Do they have decision making power? You know, do they have real power and real fluence? You know, um, in terms of how things are going to be done, how things are going to be implemented. You know, in in terms of you know community engagement. So I know that said a lot, you know, right there. But 
those to me, I think those are some of the key factors that I found to be important, you know, in terms of engaging the community in a real authentic and meaningful way. I really appreciate that in how you answered that question, Stan. Uh, you you define for us in some very clear and real ways what authentic engagement looks like, and um, it's it's about not tokenizing. It's about listening. It's it's about uh, not a place at the table all by itself, but there's real participation and and the power to make decisions. So um, the, the, that's really great. Thank you so much. And and if I were that person that just came to you, I would feel like I was walking away with aha. Okay, maybe I got to figure out how to do that, you know. But now I know the direction I'm going. Right. Yeah. I mean, you think about the time uh, something that we've talked about. It's um uh, it's a mindset. It's you know atti- you know attitudinal. Yeah. You know as as, as well. You, you know because uh, it says really uh, from the start that you matter. You know that you know I see you, <laughs> you know, and 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 that is that is so, you know that that is so important when we talk about building that rapport and building relationships and, and building trust, yeah. you, you, you know, uh, in this space. Yeah, it 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 matters. That really does. Well, um, so Stan, I I feel like I would be remiss if I didn't say, is there anything else I should be asking you about, or that we should be talking about? Yeah, yeah. Um, no, we we we've, we've covered you know a lot of ground. Um, I I would say that just in terms of you know, where we are in the space that you know when we're talking about equity, when we're talking about health equity, whether it's teen pregnancy prevention or you know other other initiatives, that we oftentimes look at just the individual behavior change, you know that need or that you know that has to occur or, or takes place. Um, we we have to also look at what what happens within organizations, within systems, and how they're intertwined, you know, with one another, and and very complex. And last but not least, I would like to say that you know we have to change the landscape, you know, the environment, you know, is, is, itself, you know, because if the environment doesn't support the behavior change, all right, then you, you know it makes it more challenging and difficult, you know, to occur. You know, or for it to happen. Not that it won't. All right? It just makes it, you know, that that much harder, or difficult, you know, uh, to go to scale or, or to, to to take place. So, you know, that's very important. You know, when when we're talking about you know doing this work, when we talk about um, in, engagement, authentic community engagement, and when we do it correctly, it's also very liberating. You know, for all. Oh. That is a great last word, Stan. Well, Stan, thank you so much. Uh, as always, my friend, it is a pleasure to spend any time I can with you, whether it's in person or whether it has, you know, as we have had to do the last 18 months by Zoom, uh, I always look forward to it. I always feel like uh, I come away uh, with my my cup refilled. I should say, I should say my cup, my mug refilled. How about that? I know you got one there too. Ah, yeah, look at that. Absolutely. Well, Stan, thank you so very much. Uh, and uh, I look forward to uh, the time when we can sit down face to face again and have that cup of coffee, that cup of tea, and just catch up. Sounds great. I'm looking forward to it as well. Thank you. Thank you.